I first met Miguel when we were both in school. We were at the Juilliard School, and I was working at the time on my bachelor's degree, and he was on master's degree. I think that all of us recognized there was something special about Miguel right in the beginning, um, even from his student days. I mean, he really shined and outshined his fellow classmates. He stopped by my office and said, how many millions today, Amy, in his very charming, charming Peruvian accent. And so and I'm looking in my drawers, you know, trying to answer that question. He was quite serious, although he was funny. We met in Fort Worth when he came to audition for um, this position, music director of the Fort Worth Symphony. But I knew about Miguel way before that. I must be one of the, his greatest fans. And so through the years, uh, we have become good friends. And, and I just, I think he's phenomenal, that man. Miguel has had a huge impact on the Forward Symphony, on the musicians of the Forward Symphony, on our product as, the, as say, the concerts of the Forward Symphony Orchestra. He takes the name of the Fort Worth Symphony Orchestra everywhere he goes. He's conducting not only the great orchestras of this country, like the New York Philharmonic, the Chicago Symphony, the Atlanta Symphony, but he's also all over the, the globe, conducting in Spain and Finland and Norway and New Zealand and Australia, and the list goes on and on. The name of Fort Worth all of, all of a sudden appears in that city, even for people who have never heard of Fort Worth. They have heard about Texas, but, but not Fort Worth. He has been always looking for ways to help the future generations of musicians. And uh, some of uh, the activities I am very grateful to Miguel has been to establish a close relationship between the Fort Worth Symphony and the Youth Orchestra in Fort Worth. Maybe people are aware of this because they may see him around town, but you know his energy comes from a lot of places. He has, uh, people call him the energizer buddy. He seems to have a limitless supply of ideas and energy. And uh, you know, I really think most of it is fueled on espresso. When he's at work, he's, he is the person that we all know and love. You know, conductor, maestro, he knows all the answers. We go to him with our questions. And the minute he gets home, that music, is to the side. He picks up his children, he plays with them in the backyard, he throws fish, frisbees with them, he takes his son fishing. At one time I, came, I went to his home and he was trying to learn a new work. And he was trying to bathe the baby in the bathtub. So he was bathing the baby and at the same time he had the music on his side, reading the music. It was, it, I should have photographed that. It was, uh, it was very special, very special. One word to describe Miguel, oh, that is difficult because he is so many. But I think that um, the one word that really comes to mind is impressive. He was impressive from a young age. He has been impressive throughout his career. And he will be impressive beyond uh, uh, today. And uh, it's what he brings. Uh, to music, he motivates our, our musicians, he inspires them. I think brilliant is the first that comes to mind. He is one of uh, the most brilliant people um, I have ever met. You know, he knows seven languages, I believe he's learning an eight fluently. Um, you know, he can memorize a, a new piece of music in, in no time flat. He conducts most of his works without a score. Last year I had the College Orchestra Directors Association Convention in Fort Worth. And all my colleagues, there were like 200 conductors at Bass Hall, witnessing that my graduate student was conducting the concert for them. So they say, how did you get this? I will say thanks to Miguel Harvedocha. Unique, absolutely unique. He's full of passion, he, and he brings us all with him towards the future, the future where music should be enhancing and embracing each human being in the world. Music gives us so much, and Miguel will get us there.